I was thinking about your husband, the very funny Paul Shear. He was here okay. almost exactly one year ago. Wow. And he was talking about your kids, your boys, who were four and two at the time. How old are they now? <laughs> Oh, they're five and five three. Five and three. Yeah, oh, that makes that perfect sense. Full year. <laughs> everything going well at home? Everything good? You know, yes. Are they in school now? So our oldest just started kindergarten, and I made the mistake of telling him his birth story just a few days before. And when he was born, the doctor told me to pull him out, and I sat him. This get what? ready. Get ready. <laughs> The doctor told you to pull him out. Yeah. As soon as you say, that's like your job. job. <laughs> I look back on it and I have questions. Uh, yeah. Um, but I pulled him out and I sat him on my chest. And the first thing that I remember happening in my crazed state was I thought a spider was running across my face. And then I thought I swallowed a spider. And my thought was, this. <laughs> This is not a clean room. This should that be I'm in. sterile. Yes, yes. We're yeah. at Cedar Sinai. Uh huh. Um, and then I realized the baby is peeing in the, directly into my mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I told him this story. <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> yeah. We're clear on that. Um, so I told him this story a few days before he started kindergarten, and. I see him, when we walk up to the school, immediately start to tell people, I peed in her mouth. <laughs> I peed in her mouth. <laughs> not even <laughs> say his, that's my mom. Like, not even, it was so dehumanizing. <laughs> Just and that did you woman. Did you explain to I the, had yeah. to. Yeah, and sure. so we've been, we've been battling that because he thinks it's hilarious, which it is. <laughs> I mean, it's just funny. Yeah. And, he wants to tell everyone <laughs> without any context. Right. Well, that's the key to it, is yeah. giving no context at that's, all. That's what, when it really lands. So I'm screaming out in grocery stores, like, birth story! It's a birth story! <laughs> Even that doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't make yeah. a lick of sense. No. Maybe you should carry around a pamphlet that and explains <laughs> it and just hand it to them and leave. Yes. Did you guys go on, uh, like, a summer va family vacation this we year? We spent eight days at Disney. Really? Yes. World or land? World. Oh, that's, that's like seven days m too many, right? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, almost a fortnight. <laughs> <laughs> wow, eight days. Too many days. Too many days. Were you stranded? Out. What happened? <laughs> no, uh, it was elective. Um, my husband, I married into a Disney family. Really? I had to take vows. It was a whole like thing. Like dwarves? Or what do you mean in your <laughs> Disney family? <laughs> they identify as Disney people. Wow. They, they are part of the culture, okay? They're part of, <laughs> it's in their blood. They, they go to the parks, they go to the rides, they are Disney people. Do and they wear the matching sweatshirts and stuff? Oh, all boy. of it, the ears. Even Paul, huh? Especially wow. Paul. Especially this Paul. Is a, this is what's disturbing about Paul because I feel like he takes a stance of like, I'm a Disney historian. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you about Mr. Toad's Magic Ride. <laughs> and I have the original poster. Uh -huh. And he's into, like, the lore and the history. And I'm just like, dude, you like the rides. <laughs> like, let's let, it's OK. Which is his favorite ride? Well, when we spent that that time there, mm -hmm. um, we were doing full days. And I, by the way, I started off the trip as an outsider looking in and really went in like this is, I'm a field reporter staring at these people uh -huh. with a lot of judgment. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm like, wow, they look crazy with turkey legs and <laughs> t-shirts. And by the end of it, I was one of them. Oh, really? Wow. And I was uh, like, what day? Into a, I know. I... On what day did you make the turn? Was it day five? It was sooner than that. It was sooner than day five. Well, because when you're changing into a bathing suit in, the, in like an alley, getting ready to go onto a water ride, like you're no better than anyone else. You, <laughs> your family, the Shears, have the foresight to wear bathing suits yeah, to we go the hard. water ride. We go hard. I never. That never occurred to me. Yeah, you, you get, get wet. It and you're just drenched for three hours until it dries. There's another way. Wow. Jimmy, turns out there's another way. I'm going to have come, to consult with you. Oh, yeah. we, we come correct. We've got water bags, to, like changing bags to put our stuff in. Maybe I'm this in, will be your next book. A how-to guide, how to do Disney. So this book is targeted at whom specifically? Women. 
women, not just women, but women who are thinking maybe they might run for That's office. That's right. This is a guidebook for women who are thinking of running for office. After the election, Donald Trump's election, I... What? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> he wasn't told about this. Oh, I have some real news to bring tonight. Uh-huh. Uh, after the election, I was feeling like I think you were pretty devastated, and I just had my second baby and was, like, attached to a, a breast pump and just, like... Mm -hmm. And just... Just like tears and and utter embarrassment for for what was going on, and I felt like I had to do something more than what I was doing. And so you've come up with a, a way to encourage women to run for office, That's and right. there are a lot of offices that people can run for. It doesn't Listen, have to be senator. Turns out I co-wrote this book with Kate Black, and she. Uh, as former chief of staff at Emily's List and has given so much of her own expertise to the book. And there are over 500,000 offices to run for in the United States, up and down the ballot. Wow, and this is really A lot, yeah. This is really a roadmap for women who want to figure out how it might work in their real lives. Mm -hmm. and, and it gives you real helpful tips. Absolutely. What is the number one thing people should know if they're thinking about maybe doing something like this? You know, I think the first step, when I asked Kate, what should I do first? What's the number one thing? She said, start telling people. And I said, but shouldn't I know where? And shouldn't I know how? And the, the what about the money? And what about those pics I sent? That guy in 97, uh -huh. like, what about these things? What and about she... the bathing suit at Disneyland? Oh, yeah, someone yeah. saw that, yeah. someone documented that. Yes. I was screaming at my kids holding a turkey leg, like, that's when <laughs> I had that footage. Yeah, that's not one you want out there, <laughs> yeah. necessarily. Yeah. So she said, no, it's incredibly important to tell people right away, because mm -hmm. you start to hold yourself accountable and even naming it and saying the words out loud starts the process. And then if your friends go like, oh, no, that's a terrible idea, you know that maybe it's not a good idea. Well, yeah. Well, okay, Jimmy. Yeah. I thought you were going to be supportive of this project, well, but... Well, it depends. I take it on a case-by-case -case <laughs> basis. Yes, you do. You know, for some people, I would say, yeah, that's a great idea. For other people, I go, not no, at no, all. no, 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 <laughs> All right. Well, that's a very interesting subject, yeah. I, I think, and uh, it's... It's a book is called Represent, The Woman's Guide to Running for Office and Changing the World. And the world could use changing. The I world is that. like an infant that's been on a plane for 14 hours <laughs> with no diapers. Yes, need some help. June Diane Raphael, everybody. Thank you very much, June. We'll be right back. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings. <laughs>